Here is a dot. When it doubles, it becomes two. If it doubles again, it becomes four. Then eight, 16, 32, 64. And suddenly, what was a gradual increase takes off. This is the power of exponentials. If we draw it on a graph, it looks like this. We're all familiar with these kinds of graphs that show us exponential increases in the scary stuff. Carbon emissions, waves of infection, invasive species. But it also shows us good stuff, especially advances in technology. We know from history that every major industrial disruption has followed the same shape, an exponential curve, with new tech being adopted very slowly at first, and then as a doubling rate kicks in, the overall transition to a new state happens quickly. It's a movie we've seen many times. Horses to cars, landlines to mobiles, and what is probably the most famous example of a technology exponential, known as Moore's Law. Back in the 1960s, Moore predicted that the computer industry would be able to double the power of chips roughly every two years, driving the relentless increase in the performance we have enjoyed in all our digital devices since then. His prediction turned into a self-fulfilling prophecy on which the computer industry organized its planning and investment. An example right now is the batteries we need for the transition to electric vehicles and storing energy across the grid. As the volumes go up and the performance improves, their cost has been coming down nearly 20% per year for the last 10 years, and this is expected to continue. When we draw this sort of process as a curve of adoption, we see an S shape, where the first half is the exponential growth getting underway and the new technology rapidly spreading, and the second half is where the balancing effects gradually slow it down as the market saturates. Performance can then go on improving at an exponential rate. So in technology transitions, we talk of getting on the S-curve to mean the actions that will get the exponential going, driving change across the system. Although this is a widespread pattern, it is often not recognized in its early stages. For example, in the past decade, each time the amount of global installed solar power capacity has doubled, its costs have declined by a third. This pace of change has far outstripped expectations. Global deployment in 2020 was over 10 times higher than had been predicted just 15 years earlier. You can see how this can happen. When you are on the early part of the curve, you might just see a straight line that grows at the same rate into the future and looks irrelevant in the context of the overall change, just as solar and wind power were seen in the early days. This is a dangerous mistake. It can lead businesses to overinvest in old technologies that quickly become stranded assets. It can make policymakers underestimate the potential of new solutions and miss opportunities to enable their faster growth. It can even make activists feel that the situation is hopeless. So when we are looking at policies and campaigns to make the rapid transitions we need, it is important to understand the true power of exponentials. In the early stages of a new technology, when things are moving slowly, you need to look at evidence for the possibility of getting the exponential going. Set goals for the collaborative action that will get the process on the S-curve, rather than setting targets for adoption that assume the low growth of the early stage. Once the new technology is on the S-curve, ambitious targets can become self-fulfilling prophecies, drawing in investment and commitment. Exponential growth is a powerful tool we can harness to create rapid change. And the good news is, we can apply it in so many areas, making what seemed impossible, possible. If you want to jump in, visit futurestewards.com where you can learn more and get started.